The entire subject of this video is about to be determined by two tests that I need to run right now. Is this motherboard just dead? Well, um, it's not what I was expecting. Hold on, hold on. Well then, I guess I didn't even need to do the second test. Actually scratch that. What I was about to do was first clear the CMOS on this motherboard to see if that helped our issue, which was no video out from the graphics card. And then second, I was going to flash the BIOS to the latest version. However, this board is apparently just completely dead. Excellent. Kioxia invented NAND flash memory almost 35 years ago and has been applying that experience ever since to develop SSDs for consumers, businesses, and data centers around the world. Kioxia's latest line of NVMe SSDs are ideal for a range of uses, whether you need high-speed storage for a laptop or high-performance gaming PC, or an enterprise or hyperscale data center. A range of sizes and capacities, including the almost impossibly small M.2 2230 BG4, means there's a good fit for everyone, and PCIe Gen 4 support available with the CM6 and CD6 lineup allows for maximum performance when paired with AMD Epic or Intel Xeon server hardware. For more on Kioxia SSDs, click the sponsor link in the video description. So I now know what today's video is going to be about, and it's going to be about building a PC that is simple and that has as few points of failure as possible. You guys might recognize this system, or I guess what's left of it. This is or was the Chad PC that I built for my friend who is named Chad. It's also a pretty overpowered system with the 5600X and an RTX 3080 uh, from Gigabyte installed in there. He has been using this system for a while. I already had to bring the system back and do some extra work on it because the all one liquid cooler failed. We replaced that with this Noctua air cooler, which has been doing just fine. However, Chad let me know a couple weeks ago that suddenly he's getting no video out from the system and he tried a few different troubleshooting techniques, but eventually he brought it over to me and I was like, Chad, I'm gonna fix this really quick, send you on your way, but it wasn't as quick of a fix as I thought it would be. So I'm gonna walk you guys through the troubleshooting steps that I went through to get to the point where I'm at now, which is that I've determined the motherboard is no longer working. In fact, it's not powering on at all. And then we're gonna use most of these parts to build Chad a fully functional computer yet again so he can get back to gaming. So when Chad originally wanted a new computer, I hooked him up with this case, which is the Fantex Evolve Shift 2 because Fantex had just hit me up and said, hey, we got this new case. Would you like to do a build in it? And I thought it was a good fit. There's nothing wrong with this case to be perfect perfectly clear, uh, but there are some accommodations for it that we had to make. For instance, it's a mini ITX case, so we needed a mini ITX motherboard. It has a wraparound PCI Express extension cable so that you can fit the motherboard on one side and then wrap that cable around in order to plug in the graphics card, which slots vertically right here. It was a very nice build until the all-in-one liquid cooler failed because the uh, radiator had to be down here and the pump was at the top, and as many people predicted, that failed. However, the NHL12S cooler from Noctua has been uh, put in its place and that's been doing a perfectly fine job. Chad has been very happy with the system and its performance and everything until suddenly he was getting no video outs. So with no video outs, you gotta go through some troubleshooting steps and the first question is gonna be, did the graphics card fail? This is an RTX 3080 from Gigabyte. It is one that I uh, disassembled and put back together, which is why I accidentally forgot to reconnect the, uh, this is just the lighting cable for that. But that was my first step, was to remove this card from the case, plug it into my test bed, and it worked. So that was actually a big relief because getting a replacement RTX 3080, especially for one that was sampled to me originally, uh, was maybe gonna take some time or not be the easiest thing to do. The next potential culprit to look at was the next line in the chain from the video out back to the motherboard, which is the riser cable. And this is actually another issue where Fantex has gotten a little bit of criticism because the Evolve Shift 2 ships with a PCI Express Gen 3 riser cable. And that can cause issues when you have a Gen 4 capable CPU or PCI Express controller and a Gen 4 capable graphics card. And if they try to negotiate Gen 4 and you've got a Gen 3 cable connected, it can lead to a no video out sort of situation. So my next step was to see if that was the issue. And for that, I grabbed a non-PCI Express 4.0 cable, in this case, a Zotac GTX 1650, which is convenient because I don't have to plug in supplemental power to it. Plugging that in to the other end of the riser cable still led to no video outs. Then I pulled the motherboard out of the case, which was a little bit of an extra effort that I was hoping to not have to do, but I did anyway. And then I tried just connecting this graphics card directly 
to the motherboard to see if uh, maybe this riser cable had failed or if there was some other issue with negotiating PCIe 3.0 or 4.0 that was causing us no video out yet again. Now, I should point out that the rest of the system seemed to be working just fine. The, the fans were spinning up and RGB was turning on and it was behaving as if the system was fully functional, except just no video out. Now that day that Chad had originally brought the system over, we ran out of time at that point and he had to go to work. So uh, we sort of put it on the back burner for the time being. My next steps though, were gonna be to try to get the motherboard functional. And that's what I started this video out doing, which was clearing the CMOS. There's two little pinouts that you can probably just barely see there. So you bridge those with the screwdriver or something like that and it clears the CMOS. My plan was to do that, power up the system, see if there was a video out and if there wasn't I was going to flash the BIOS because there is a somewhat recent F13 uh, BIOS version for this motherboard that uh, came out within the past month or two and there have been reported issues with this board having the same problem uh, and that was fixed by updating the BIOS to the latest version. However, as you maybe saw in that intro, after clearing the CMOS the board is just completely non-functional. Won't power up in any way, shape, or form at all, and that is not good. So at this point, there is further testing that could be done on this motherboard to determine if it has truly died or if it could be brought to life. However, I don't have time for that, and my goal today is to get Chad a working system and remove any potential points of failure because I don't want to have to fix Chad's computer again. Fortunately though, there is some flexibility there because like I said, I was the one who said, hey Chad, I can build you a system in this case. He said, you know, that's a cool case and all, but I don't necessarily need something like that that's mini ITX and the tower style and everything. It's cool and all, but it does require a mini ITX motherboard. And if I want to get Chad a working system as soon as possible, I need to use parts that I have here and I actually don't have another mini ITX motherboard. So I can't really rebuild the system in this case if I'm gonna go with a larger motherboard. The motherboard that I think I am gonna use is a full-size ATX board, which is the MSI Mag B550 Tomahawk. This is a board that I've already used in a few different builds, so I know it's functional and working. It's a B550 chipset motherboard, so I'm fairly confident that if I take Chad's existing operating system installation with all of his apps and everything and just swap it into that board, I won't need to reinstall install windows or anything like that. And it means that if I'm moving away from a mini ITX form factor that I get to enjoy some of the benefits of going with a larger style case. And for that, I'm gonna stick with Fantex because I also happen to have an Eclipse P400A here. This is the white version, comes with three addressable RGB fans in the front, so there should be plenty of airflow already. And on the hopefully very slim chance that there is a further issue with Chad's system again down the line, working with a full-size ATX case for future troubleshooting or and repairs is a lot simpler than having to disassemble a mini ITX build. My wife thinks that's hilarious. And so here we are, I'm going to be doing a build. I'm gonna be focusing on simplicity, functionality, using air cooling rather than introducing the possibility for uh, parts that might fail over time or in a few months or in six months or a year. And most of all, because he lives a good hour away from me, I wanna make sure that when I give Chad this computer, he can use it and I won't have to deal with it ever again. <laughs> That's probably not gonna be how it goes, but uh, I'll, I'll do my best. Let's quickly run down the parts I'm using, starting with the case, the Fantex Eclipse 400, the P400A specifically, the A stands for air. The air version is available in black and white and it comes with three RGB fans in the front that are nice fans that come pre-wired up and I really appreciate that because I'm not gonna be able to get away completely with having no RGB in this system. I, I would eliminate that if I could, again, because it's just something that isn't really necessary for the functionality of the system. But anyway, uh, the Mag B550 Tomahawk, very, very solid B550 motherboard from MSI. I actually have it right here because I was using it for some other stuff, so I'll dust it off a little bit. But full-size ATX motherboard with all the features Chad needs and none of the ones he doesn't, I guess, except maybe that USB 3.2 Gen 2 front panel connector because the case doesn't have that, but never mind that. For the power supply, I have a Thermaltake Tough Power GF2 ARGB 850 watt unit. I know. More RGB. Chad actually said he likes RGB, and if RGB is there, he, he, he doesn't mind. Turn it on if possible. But uh, I'm mainly using this power supply because it makes no practical sense to use a perfectly good SFX power supply in a case this large. This unit actually provides a little bit more wattage at 850 watts. It's still 80 plus gold rated, so that should be plenty of headroom for our uh, RTX 3080 graphics card. The remaining components we are going to still use and carry over from the existing system. So the 5600X and the cooler, we're going to use both of those. There's an M.2 NVMe SSD in there. I forget which the actual model is, but we're going to use that as well as the uh, SATA uh, Crucial MX500 drive. I think this is a two terabyte drive for his uh, games and stuff. The memory, of course, we will continue to use. The Vengeance RGB Pro kits doesn't have anything wrong with it. So again, 
RGB to uh, satisfy Chad, and fortunately, RGB doesn't necessarily lead to more failures with memory. RGB memory is perfectly safe in my experience. And then the graphics card, which you can see has uh, gotten some use. There's a little bit of dust on there, but it's not too bad. And my main question is gonna be, should I go the extra mile here, remove this cooler one more time so I can plug this back in? Is that worth it? The plug for it is really tucked up under there, so I would have to remove the cooler. I'll decide that in a minute. For now, let's start building. Made some progress with the reassembly. Uh, decided to go ahead and remove the uh, GPU cooler, the air cooler here. I only had to repaste the thermal paste on the GPU, but that was in order to, again, plug in that one little cable that I forgot to plug in. So uh, hopefully the lighting on the RTX 3080 will work again. And now we have the motherboard all set up as well. Because we're going with a larger case that has a little bit more clearance, I decided to also swap out the fan, partially because, you know, aesthetics and everything, the Noctua colors aren't going to match at all with anything else that's in the system. And it's gonna be much more visible because we're going with a full, full size ATX system that has a clear side panel. But have no fear, this is still a Noctua NFF12, still a very, very good, fan for cooling, especially going across a small radiator or fin stack like this one. And Noctua's little, like, I, I wanna give Noctua some props here for their little metal brackets here that you use to connect the fans on. They're so intelligently designed, they have different steppings, so the same little bracket will work to mount a standard 25 millimeter thick uh, fan or um, the thinner fan like this one that it ships with for low profile mode. That said, got the 5600X reinstalled, memory, the coolers back in there and uh, swapped our M.2, which is a WD Black. I forgot, I gave, I gave Chad a really nice uh, PCIe Gen 3 drive with the WD Black uh, one terabyte drive there. So now we can install this into the new case. truth oh thank goodness okay <laughs> so before installing all of this into a case i decided you know what dealt with some hardware failures just recently let's do the smart thing and do a quick outside of the box test uh, to hopefully make sure that we're getting video outs and all that good stuff is the monitor on yes it is we'll, we'll give it a moment here to reassess the new hardware that's been connected it appears to be hung up on CPU right now. Yep, oh, it's moving along, it's moving along. Hey, look at that. Look at that. It appears to be functional. Okay, we can proceed with installing everything into the case.
And just like that, the system is now installed in the Fantex P400A. A nice, simple, straightforward ATX build. I didn't add too much to it. I did put an exhaust fan here. Fortunately, I had one that will match up with the Fantex addressable RGB fans in the front. So I was able to just wire that directly up to them. So the Fantex controller that's built into this case can control the RGB on that if uh, Chad wants, or it's also plugged into the motherboard. So motherboard RB RGB controls can be used as well. The power supply on the bottom is not connected to that, but it has an external color switcher button uh, that the RGB can be cycled with. But honestly, the RGB wasn't really supposed to be the focus of this build. It just sort of happens to be there as well because some of the components I was using had it integrated. But I'm gonna power this back on and, oh, uh, oh wait, <laughs> it gave me, it was like, oh, I'm gonna not turn on for like just a second or so just to give you a hard time. But um, all right, now it's powering up and hey, look, we got the uh, Gigabyte RGB Glow on the graphics card again, since we reconnected that. And immediately I'm impressed with just how quiet this system is, right? I hear, I hear practically nothing. That's nice. That's a great feature of any system. And look, we're booted back up into the operating system and now we can go through Chad's uh, search history in the Internet Explorer and see, see what he's been up to, I guess. Chad, you should add a password to the system. I'd recommend it. So there you have it, guys. The Chad PC has now been given new life and a new home and a new motherboard and a new power supply, I suppose. But thankfully with just those few parts swapped out, uh, the operating system and everything we're able to leave as is. And that allowed us to fix Chad's problem. Maybe not in the way that most people would have because most people don't have, you know, hardware lying around that they can just swap in. And for a lot of people, it would have been more practical to just RMA that motherboard that was defective and get a working one to reinstall the system in the original case. But uh, for our purposes right now, Chad really, really, really wants to get this system back. And I think he might be coming by tonight to pick it up. So that's the good news. And I'm I'm really happy with how this all came together. And like I said, the focus here, build a computer that's powerful, that can get the job done, but that also just doesn't have too much extra stuff going on that can lead to complications or failures in the future, hopefully, knock on wood. But that's all for this video, you guys. I'll put links to the parts that I use and everything down in the video's description, as well as links to the original build and the follow-up fix that I already did to this system once in case you're interested. That said, uh, if you'd like to help support my channel, check out my store at paulshardware.net. You can buy shirts, mugs, pint glasses. My beer sets are finally back in stock now that my pint glasses are back in stock, so check those out. And uh, if you wanna hit the like button on this video if you enjoyed it, definitely do that and subscribe to my channel if you're not already, if you'd like to see more tech videos, build videos, me working with computer parts in the future. Thanks again for watching this one and we'll see you in the next video.